This is the story of Pakistan International Airlines Flight 301. On the 7th of January 2020, a Pakistan International Airlines 777 was flying from Islamabad to Karachi. At 7.26 a.m. UTC, Flight 301 was at 40,000 feet getting ready for the descent into Karachi. The air traffic controller told the pilots of Flight 301 to expect runway 7 right at Karachi. This so far had been a normal flight and everyone was looking forward to an uneventful landing in Karachi. Now the pilots just had to let ATC know when they were ready to descend and the controller would clear them down. Within a few minutes, flight 301 was down to 35,000 feet and the controller cleared them down to the waypoint Mackley. At 7.39 a.m., the controller said, when ready, descend to flight level 180. Now, flight 301 had been cleared down to 18,000 feet. The pilots of the Pakistani 777 put the plane into a descent, but something had slipped through the cracks. As Pakistan International Flight 301 started its descent, another 777, this time an Emirates 777 flying from Dubai to Delhi, was flying in the opposite direction at 35,000 feet. When the Pakistani 777 started descending, both planes were 70 nautical miles apart. With both jets at cruise speed, that 70 nautical miles between them would be gone in a matter of minutes. In just three minutes, that 70 nautical miles of separation had reduced to 15, and the Pakistani 777 was still descending, and the Emirati 777 was holding itself at 35,000 feet. When they were 15 nautical miles away, the Pakistani 777 was descending through 35,900 feet, meaning that it was only 900 feet above the Emirates 777. At 7.47 and 52 seconds, on the radar scope at air traffic control, both planes went from their default safe green color to a bright red. The STCA, or short-term conflict alert, had automatically triggered. This is to get the controller's attention about a developing situation. The controller immediately got in contact with Emirates Flight 516 and said, UAE 516, turn left by 10 degrees for spacing. He was attempting to send the Emirates 777 to the left in an attempt to avoid a collision. He also asked the Pakistani 777 to turn to the left. The pilots of the Emirates 777 just replied with left, acknowledging the course change. Just as he did that, the TCAS RA sounded. The TCAS, or the Traffic Collision and Avoidance System, is a system of transponders on airplanes that help pilots avoid traffic conflicts and collisions with other planes in an area. If two planes get too close for comfort, the TCAS system will give both planes complementary resolution advisories to remedy the situation. In this case, the TCAS system asked the Pakistani 777 to climb, and it asked the Emirates 777 to descend. Both sets of pilots on both planes immediately listened to the automated warnings. The Pakistani 777 started climbing away, and the Emirates 777 fell away. At their closest point, both planes were only 400 feet apart vertically. Once both planes had passed by each other, the Pakistani plane continued its descent and the Emirates 777 got back up to 35,000 feet. The controller, who was probably shaken by the near miss, cleared the Pakistani 777 down to 10,000 feet, and he was just trying to figure out what had happened in the skies over Pakistan. He called up the Emirates 777 and asked them what altitude that they were at and if they had overshot their target altitude of 35,000 feet. The pilots of the Emirates 777 told the controller that they were right where they were supposed to be and that they had not overshot their target altitude when the TCAS resolution advisory occurred. The Pakistani 777 made a safe landing at Karachi with no issues whatsoever. And the Emirates 777 continued on its way to Delhi with no issues. These two planes between them had 693 people on board so it was of paramount importance to find out what had happened. On the day of the accident, both planes were more or less heading towards each other. The Pakistani 777 was descending and the Emirates 777 was holding its altitude. One of those planes was not where they were supposed to be. The investigators listened to the tapes from that day to see what was said and how each set of pilots interpreted what was being said. They came to the seemingly innocuous sounding phrase from the air traffic controller. The controller, when clearing the Pakistani 777 to descend from 40,000 feet, he said, When ready, descend to flight level 180. He 
He's basically telling the Pakistani 777 to descend when the Pakistani 777 wants to descend. But this was in direct contrast to the SATI, or the Station Air Traffic Instructions. The controller should have said, when ready, descend to flight level 180, report leaving. It's a small change, but it made a world of difference. For one, when such a clearance was given, two controllers, namely the Area Radar Controller East and the Area Procedure Controller East, needed to coordinate first so that both of them were on the same page. That did not happen. Moreover, due to the way the instruction was worded, the pilots of the Pakistani 777 never informed ATC when they started their descent from 40,000 feet. That was important. Had the controllers known that Flight 301 was making its way down, then they might have been able to spot the two planes that were on a collision course. But the thing is, things should have not gotten this bad. Why was the Pakistani 777 allowed to descend when the Emirates 777 was so close to it coming in in the opposite direction? To understand this, we need to get into the mindset of the controller at the time. We need to see what he saw. This is the screen of the radar controller when he cleared the Pakistani 777 down to 18,000 feet. If you look at the screen, you can see that when the clearance was given, the only traffic that was immediately visible was the ATR-72 that was at 17,000 feet. So asking the Pakistani 777 to descend was not a bad move with that picture. But within a few minutes, the traffic situation had changed. The ATR was out of the picture and the Emirates 777 was making its way towards the Pakistani 777. This big change was missed by the controller. Ideally, he should have amended his clearance asking the Pakistani plane to hold or asking them to reroute so that a bit of separation could be maintained. But that did not happen. By the time the controller did ask the pilots to do something, the pilots were already following the TCAS resolution advisories. A reason why the controller may have missed this traffic conflict might be due to the fact that he was supervising a student at the time. That may have taken away his attention from the task at hand. What do you think? In your opinion, do you think training the student was too much for the controller? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. In the wake of this near miss, the Pakistani authorities doubled down on refresher training for its controllers. Which is a great thing because air traffic control is not just dependent on what's happening right now, but also on what will happen in the future. You as an air traffic controller should be able to anticipate the consequences of your actions. What happens if you reroute a plane in a certain way? Or what happens if you ask a plane to speed up? All those decisions have consequences and it's your duty to make sure that those are good decisions. In addition to that, the controllers need to be able to think on their feet and respond to evolving threats. A refresher course would allow controllers to do that better. In addition to that, improvement and collaboration between controllers is also emphasized in the report. In case of an emergency, information needs to flow fast and decisions need to be taken as soon as possible. What do you think can be done to prevent something like this from happening again? Let me know. This near miss could have been absolutely disastrous if things had gone slightly differently. Both planes had 693 people between them. If someone had taken a bit too long to react or if someone had decided to delay their evasive maneuvers, this could have easily been the world's worst air crash, eclipsing the on-ground collision in Tenerife. If anything, this video is a testament to modern technology and the margins that it affords us. You can always have the best controllers, the best pilots, but they're only human and they will make mistakes every now and then. We now live in an age where the technology that accompanies those humans can kick in and save the day. If this scenario had happened 40 or 50 years ago, do you think the outcome would have been same or do you think it would have been more disastrous? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to watch another video on a near miss, then I highly recommend my video on a spice jet near miss over India. Link on your screen right now. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.